Hello and welcome to a new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This is a special episode all about Stranger Things, a little recap of season one and going over season two. I will give you a very big spoiler alert right now. We go into spoilers. Um, we're posting it a little bit late, so hopefully you guys have had a chance to see it. Um, or for the crazy people like myself and Tony who saw it in the first day or so, <laughs> this is all for you. So if you have not seen uh, season one or season two of Stranger Things, stop here, go binge it, do yourself a favor, and then come back and listen to this episode. And if you have, you're good to go. Uh, if you really don't want to watch Stranger Things uh, and just want to listen to about it, proceed with caution because this will make you want to watch it and you'll be all spoiled. <laughs> so enjoy the episode. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Tony, the movie guy and Miss Money Yenny still. <laughs> all right. So first of all, actually, uh, let's talk about that because that's kind of funny. So um, I just dubbed you Miss Money Yenny because, you know, I'm like Tony, Tony, the movie guy. It doesn't really sound like Bond, James Bond. But so I was like, oh, why don't we call you Miss Money, Miss Money Yenny? You know? Well, your picture does look a bit like James Bond and you're so actually the Godfather. Know? But oh. um, yeah, the logo is based on the Godfather, oh. by the way, for those who don't know. I was like, oh, James Bond. <laughs> it's not James Bond. <laughs> anyway. You're wearing I, a tux. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's from our wedding as well. Yeah. <laughs> but the guy who designed the logo it was perfect because oh. he picked the uh, the Godfather. So yeah, that's the Godfather a logo from the movie. Awesome. Um, anyway, so um, one thing I just wanted to bring up real quick was, um, yeah, we, we talked about a, a, a nickname for you, you know, yeah. or and is there another one? And I did a poll last week. Right. Um, and we got a ton of responses did yeah. you want to say something no it's just funny because the only reason he really did a poll is because i kept actually forgetting my nickname uh, so he thought well, i, I needed thought a you more didn't special like it one. yeah that meant the total guy reaction to think i don't like it just because i forget it so i was like no tony i love it All it's right. a great nickname well, it was my idea <laughs> exactly that's what i'm validating it's an amazing nickname <laughs> anyway we asked our listeners and we said look give us some ideas and we did a survey yeah. and we got a lot of uh feedback and a lot of different ideas um and i thought i'd just share some of them um as a nickname for you um <laughs> and no everyone was uh -oh. fun about it i just thought some of them were pretty creative okay. the most popular one was me but again as we said it was me basically saying jenny <laughs> from forrest gump Which is, that's really it's great funny. but all it really entails is me speaking in a forrest gump accent and sounding like <laughs> yeah. a, a fool yeah jenny so yeah so that but and you exactly and your name isn't jenny it's yenny exactly. so it's yenny i know what love is you know. <laughs> what's mo what's hilarious about that and why we can't do it is that actually when Forrest Gump came out at school yeah. is what everybody would call me Oh, really? Yes. And I got so annoyed. It was like, yeah, nay. Well, yeah, you nay. I'm like, no. Anyway, yeah. So that doesn't work. Uh, but look, some of these other ones from the listeners were pretty cool. Um, Jurassic Yenny. <laughs> Yenny Unchained. Yenny the Vampire Slayer, which I you like. Because you love B I was Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, yeah, you were. Um, Yenny the Flick Chick, which actually mm -hmm. I thought had a kind it's of cute. cool ring to cute. it. Yenflix, which is a bit weird. And then I love Yenny Five is Alive. That's good. I actually I love really that. Like that. That's too. a deep cut to short circuit, one of those absolutely cheesy 80s movies that I love. It's good. Anyway, so I thought that was fun. Um, we love you, listeners. Thank you. Uh, we're going to stick with Miss Money, Yenny, right? Yeah, we decided <laughs> after all that, and we really appreciate the contribution that Tony's nickname for me is what's sticking well remember it's your choice yes. so we're, we're gonna do that okay good so um i'm so excited about this episode this is gonna be like a full-on nerdgasm uh, this is a special episode all about stranger things this is how excited tony is about this episode how excited am i i'm calling him right now oh <laughs> yeah it's my ringtone <laughs> listen to this guys i mean it's amazing though it spells 80s, 100%. So synth, man. And there we go. Stranger Things episode, Let starting now. 
special episode all about Stranger Things. <laughs> okay, anyway, yeah, it's my ringtone. Um, <laughs> no, look, um, I mean, obviously I'm a total 80s kid, but um, I mean, Stranger Things came out a year ago, the yep, first season. Exactly. Um, and I, oh yeah, so we're going to talk all about Stranger it's Things. Actually, a bit, uh, bit over a year. They said a year and a half it took yeah. them to produce this uh, one. Let me do a disclaimer because yeah. I can't hold myself back. This is going to be t- full of spoilers. Spoilers, okay? guys. So we- we'll note that um, when we put the episode up, uh, we're going to just go into Stranger Things. We're going to talk about season one, talk about season two. I have to vent. Yeah. Uh, I I absolutely love this show. I I have to discuss it. So it absolutely will have spoilers and look i mean number one most people binge watch this literally within like 24 hours um number two netflix everyone's as crazy as you (laughs) a lot of people are you'd be surprised but also netflix dropped a seven episode beyond stranger things seven um, show seven episodes oh my god which is all spoilers it's all spoilers so um yeah do not and i'm serious this time danny uh, earlier when i say turn this off and watch that movie before listening but i'm serious if you haven't watched season two Turn it off, watch it, then please do listen to this podcast yeah, episode again. Um, okay, good. So Stranger Things came out, yeah, a bit more than a year ago. Um, and uh, it was from these, you know, the Duffer bo- brothers, Matt and Ross Duffer, totally unheard of. No one really knew who they were. Yeah. Um, there was very little promotional marketing for it. Nothing um, really. I, I think I saw the first trailer for it maybe a week or a couple of days before it came yeah. out. And it piqued my interest. Yeah. But I just had no clue what it was. And then all of a sudden, you know, because Netflix drops the entire season. So it was only eight episodes, about 45 to a minutes to an hour each. They dropped it, I think, on a Thursday or a Friday, the full first season. Mm-hmm. And by Monday, literally, it was a sensation worldwide. Yeah. Just from pure word of mouth. Yeah. People were just like oh my God, have you seen Stranger Things? This is the best thing you will ever watch. And I was one of them. I mean, I was just You were all watching over it, it on the Sunday, I remember. I walked in and you were glued to this TV show and we were meant to be going somewhere or doing something and you were just glued. You were on I, like yeah. episode four. <laughs> I was totally antisocial because we actually had a bunch of friends over. We were barbecuing right. and I was just yeah. sitting in the living room going, shut up, I'm watching Stranger <laughs> Things. And everyone's like, what is this? I started it the next day. Yeah, so I, I think I watched it twice through the first season in the first week i've now seen the first season five times wow. in full wow. um and i just watched it again in preparation for season two um i i fell in love with stranger things instantly yeah it's one of those things where it, i don't know it touched me it brought out the kid in me totally. it was kind of like the only thing i can compare it to was like watching the force awakens when that came out and i was just like oh my god but it's almost better yeah. it has completely absorbed me into the world Mm -hmm. and a lot of people ask me well what's so good about it and my answer especially for season one is well what's so good about it everything yeah i really believe that for season one i think it was pitch perfect yeah first and foremost uh, the show is such a throwback to 80s movies and to, uh, I mean, also just the time period, the sets, the clothing, mm-hmm. everything, it's so well done. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, it's the throwbacks to all the films that you grew up, like Aliens, Thing, Stand Terminator, by Stand By Me. And we'll go into, you know, some more specifics on some of these things. Ghostbusters, yeah. um, you know, all these different things that we grew up with. It, it pays such great homage to them. Yeah. It didn't come across cheap at all no it wasn't like ripping off from them or anything like that it paid such great respect and as a matter of fact some of the people who were some of the first super fans saying oh you need to check the show out were people like stephen king and john carpenter they absolutely loved it yeah Uh, i mean we'll get to this a bit more in season two did you know sean austin who's in season two he auditioned to be in it because he's such a fan and when the the duffer brothers saw his audition tape they were like holy shit it's Mickey from Goonies. Oh my god! It's Samwise Gamgee from yeah. The Lord of the Rings. Now we have to like put him in it and give him a major character Which plot. Which I loved. By yeah, the way. he was great. And I'm, I'm jumping, but um, I really, I really just wanted to kind of say like, 
Okay, so yeah, the nostalgia, the the whole mood, the the music is incredible. Yeah, um, it's by so uh, cool. I think I wrote it down here. It's Kyle Dixon and um, I'm sorry, some other guy. But uh, the the soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal. I th I've listened to the soundtrack a hundred times. I absolutely wow. love it. Uh, and the soundtrack is very John Carpenterish, um, but again, totally unique. You know, so it, unique. It keeps it. To, it has its own beat, yeah. you know. Um, it's not just your regular, I don't know, weird synthesizer. It's like 80s synthesizer and, uh, yeah, completely their own thing. It's just, it's amazing. I, I love the soundtrack, as you just saw. Yeah. My ringtone is a soundtrack, but the whole music is fantastic. Um, so the style, the music, the throwbacks, the nostalgia, um, obviously the plot and the story, it's very sinister, it's very mysterious, it's quite uh, scary and supernatural, it's mm -hmm. got a lot of uh, comedy and drama. Um, but then most of all, which I think really makes it so winning, is the actors and, and just the characters. You've got essentially like three groups you've got you know like the adults yeah um Winona Ryder I mean Winona Ryder herself is just a perfect throwback to the 80s totally. I mean she was a, you know Beetlejuice um she was in so many things from yeah. the 80s and then in the 90s Edward Scissorhands yeah and then through the 90s yeah. as well she was like the it girl of the 90s actually um but you know she was fantastic yeah. and actually she plays the mother of um the, you know so season one i'm jumping all over the place but so season one essentially is um this kid will Byers um goes missing you know yeah. he vanishes in a little town you know it's a, it's a town called hawkins in uh, i think indiana it's a, yeah. a made-up town um and it's just a little small town and and he goes missing and there's some supernatural element because he sees some kind of monster or something and he goes missing and he vanishes um and his mother is played by uh, uh winona Ryder, who is uh, joyce byers so the adult cast is uh, joyce byers um, Winona Ryder, and then um, David Harbour plays uh, Hopper, Chief Jim Hopper, who I I absolutely loved him. In season one, he was probably my favorite character. Yeah. He, he was sensational. And what I loved as well was David Harbour is one of those actors, I don't know about you, I've seen him around for 10, 20 years. Yeah, I've like, seen I him can't in, even think of what he was in, but I've seen him in He's just one of those of like character actors yeah. who's been around, but he's never like had his spotlight and right. boy did he get it here yeah. he, so he's the chief the like the police chief, police chief yeah. uh you know and at first he you know he's all just kind of so she comes to him she's like where's my son my son's missing at first he's all like you know i don't have time for this so uh, what does he say uh, mornings is for coffee and contemplation you know <laughs> That's and, right. Um, you know, but then as he starts to investigate, he takes it more seriously when he finds the kid's missing bike and different things that don't make sense. Uh, but he's fantastic. Um, and then uh, Matthew Modine, again, he's a throwback from the 80s. Yeah. He was in a, a Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket, oh. uh, which is a, a war film, so you probably haven't seen nope. it. He's like the sinister... Um, scientist Brenner, you know, um, who, you know, runs this like Hawkins facility, this lab, you know, but basically you've got, so you've got the adult cast who were fantastic. Then you've got the teenagers. So you've got Nancy Byers, who is uh, played by this girl called Natalie Dyer. Never seen him before. She was great. Jonathan um, Byer. Oh no, it's Nancy uh, Wheeler. Sorry. Yeah. Nancy Wheeler. And her name is Natalie Dyer. And then Charlie Heaton, who's a British actor, plays Jonathan Byers, which is Will Byers' um, brother, uh, older brother. The kid that goes missing. Yeah. And then Joe Keery is the actor who plays this character called uh, Steve Harrington, who was actually just written to be this one note stereotype kind of douchebag right? yeah. jock yeah and then it bloomed into something else which we'll go into in more detail for sure um but all of those t so the, the adult actors are just phenomenal then all these teenage characters are just fantastic and then you've got the kids i mean the kids oh my god the, the duffer brothers just blew it out of the park with these kids so you've got as i said you've got this um this kid who plays uh will byers i can't remember his name do you remember his name will byers no the, the young kid here, Noah Schnapp. I want to okay. say their names because these actors are just, they're so phenomenal. You know, these kids started when they were like 11 or 12 or something. Um, yeah, so Noah Schnapp is the kid who plays Will Byers. He's the kid that goes missing. Millie Bobby Brown plays L11, who is, this, this girl is 
phenomenal. So awesome. Um, and then Caleb uh, McLaughlin plays Lucas Sinclair. Finn Wolfhard plays Mike Wheeler. By the way, Finn Wolfhard. What a rock and roll name, man. His <laughs> name is so metal. Quite a name. I love it, yeah. And then Gaten Matarazzo plays Dustin Henderson, who, who I, I fell in love with. So these are the, the group of the young kids. And they're about, in the first one, like 10, 11? Maybe 10 or 11. Yeah. And in season two, I guess they're like 12, 12 13. 13. Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, I've kind of jumped around a bit. But basically the plot is Will Byers goes missing. So then you've got the mother, Joyce, frantically trying to search for a son, uh, working with, um, you know, Jim Hopper, um, played by David Harbour, to, to find him. Um, and then you've got, um, obviously, the the young kids yeah. who are, take it upon themselves to try and go and find out what happened to Will. Exactly. Um, and then they discover, um, while they're looking for this missing boy, Will, they discover this young girl, um, which is a... Her only name is Eleven because she's got Eleven like tattooed on her hand. Um, this is in the first episode of season one. And she can't speak or Yeah, anything. she doesn't speak much at all. She looks like she's just escaped from a lab, which she find out she has. Um, and she's played by Millie Bobby Brown. Um, anyway, so look, I'm not going to break down every episode yeah, of no. season one. But basically... If you haven't seen it, shame on you. Yeah, again, this is going to be spoilers because yeah. I can't hold myself back. It's, it's so phenomenal. But season one takes you through what happens to Will Byers and then learning about this character, Eleven, or yeah. as the kids call her, Elle, who basically she's like a badass. She's got all yeah. these supernatural powers. She's telepathic, telekinetic. She can move things with her mind. Um, and she befriends the kids, yeah. the young kids, and kind of becomes their like Yoda friend and stuff like that. Um but it, it just, it's so good. Every episode is so action-packed. So and talk about binge-worthy. Oh, yeah. It's so addictive. Yeah. You know, as I said, I've watched it five times through. And it's like, when I finish watching Stranger Things, I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do now? I know. <laughs> I try and find something else to watch. And nothing's um, quite like that. Like, I remember finishing season one. And that was the only thing my husband ever binged with me. Oh, really? Other than like, you know, our, our Game of Thrones nights, which you don't binge, they're TV. Right. But, yeah, you watch an episode yeah. every week. But that, we watched basically three episodes a night. So we were done in three, four nights. And he does not do that, my wow. husband. So when we were done, I was so sad. Yeah, no, me too. And then I was waiting an entire year for season two. Obviously, there was so much anticipation for season two. Yeah, and I don't think the Duffers or anyone actually even realized how big it was going to get. Not at all. Because, again, the the immediate um, word of mouth and just it became a phenomenon. Yeah. It really did. Um, and also, I, I think you'll remember this. It wasn't just the show itself. It was um, the, the kids were showing up everywhere on talk shows yep. they they sung at like the pre-grammys yep. they like sung bruno mars and yep. like they were so charming and real life in all their interviews and then it was a great comeback for winona Ryder. and then it, you know david harbour as i said who's a character actor who's been around for a long time really got recognition uh the the music everyone was listening to the music and being you know that was being shared all over the place it just it became a phenomenon so then and such an unexpected phenomenon right, it that really, was what yeah, it was it really was it was no just no one knew yeah it was just it was just so perfect you know yeah. such a, a you know a beautiful homage but again, it, it had its own voice and every aspect of it was fantastic. Yeah. It really was. So then the pressure was on, obviously. I, I mean, I remember for a few months, it was a lot of people were like, oh, they won't do a season two. You know, it should just stand alone. And then, of course, within a few months, yeah, it was no like, <laughs> duh, obviously. Um, you know, it was, a, I mean, I think it's the third highest rated and watched show on Netflix, I'm not surprised which for all. a brand new show that was unheard of was pretty yeah. incredible. It was only behind House of Cards, okay. which is their original Netflix, original TV show. And which has Orange, been going, what, six years? Yeah, yeah, and Orange is the New Black. There we go. Um, but anyway, um, so then I think within a couple months, uh, there was an announcement of season two. And then I think it was uh, during the halftime in 4th of July this year, they dropped the first commercial for it, which already looked amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they're all the kids in their Ghostbusters outfits yeah. and stuff. I mean, so already there was all this excitement created. And then they cast some new um, 
cast members. Yeah. Uh, Sean Austin was like the main one who, I mean, everyone knows him as Mikey from Goonies and Samwise Gamgee from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, and then also uh, these two kids, um, uh, this guy called, I think, Dacre Montgomery, who plays mm-hmm. this kid called Billy. And then there was a, another girl. I don't remember her name. The oh, yeah, Sadie Sink, who oh, plays okay. this young kind of tomboy girl called Max, who befriends the young kids. Uh, those are the new cast members. Um, and then, obviously, all the other um, cast returns. So, I mean, in season one, and again, this is a spoiler. So, in season one, it's it, number one, it's set in 1983 in season one. Um, and obviously, the whole plot of season one is them finding will buyers um and it's much more than him just going missing it's a whole supernatural element there's a, a demo gorgon you know <laughs> as they call it which is the, you know the upside down which now that's just a term everyone knows yeah. which is basically this like creepy alternate universe yeah. you know where this With demo gorgon exists and... yeah where he you know snatched this kid um, oh, and season one, I have to talk about it, created this justice for Bob. You know, it was so <laughs> right. random. Was there's, so funny. there's this, this uh, female, girl. yeah, female actress who was basically kind of your every girl, played by this girl called Shannon Purser, who played um, uh, uh, Nan- yeah, Nancy Wheeler's best friend, Barb. Yeah. And she, uh, again, spoilers, she dies in like the third episode. Yeah. She has maybe... 20 minutes of screen time yeah she became a sensation on her own That's there was so this funny. huge following online of justice for bob because people could relate to her yeah. a lot more than like nancy wheeler and i get that um, she was like the friend and this is a bit of a spoiler on the story but she was that kind of friend where her friend has suddenly gained some popularity right and she has this really you know she feels left out and feels like her friend is being someone she's not and she's sad about it and so you feel kind of really like a lot of compassion for this character and you can relate now i hate to say it i didn't so much i didn't dislike her (laughs) but i was not on the bar bandwagon i I don't want to offend anyone i I like the actress oh i wasn't either i just found it really yeah it was i mean she got like an emmy nomination as well like what yeah it was you know and again nothing wrong with the actress but there were so many phenomenons within the phenomenon yeah. of Stranger Thing. You know, the music, you know, Bar Justice for Barb. It became like a meme, you oh know. My gosh. Everything um, became a meme yeah. from Stranger S- Things. Even Steve Harrington, actually, I want to talk about that. Steve Harrington, um, you know, was basically just the the jock douche boyfriend of of the, the sister, Nancy Wheeler. Um, and he was just supposed to be a one-note character. And he's kind of an asshole. And then his character just kind of grows yeah, totally. and he shows like a different side. And he, you know, it wasn't just one note. He has all these different facets. And by the end, you actually really like him yeah, you do. and he becomes heroic. Yeah. And then we'll get to him in season two. In season two, he's literally my favorite character. He's, he's really you know, cool, he's yeah. phenomenal. So, and you know, and the Duffer brothers themselves said like we, his role was supposed to be really uh, small and minuscule. It wasn't, yeah. You know, but then the actor kind of wrote the character and role and it became the whole thing it did. Weren't they intending on killing him early oh, in yeah. season oh, one? Yeah, By the way, in on Danny this. is <laughs> in yeah, on I've this. I've been here the whole time, guys. Sorry. <laughs> She's totally silent, but she is in on this. Sorry. I didn't get introduced, so I <laughs> felt awkward Oh, I'm saying. sorry. I didn't introduce yeah, you. Yeah, I was, I was going to jump anything. and do it, but then I thought I'd get like a slap on the hand Why or something. didn't you say something? Okay, <laughs> I'm just really excited about stranger Tony's, things and Tony's for some weird reason nerd. i'm sweating like a, a nerd as well but i i love stranger things so i was so obsessed to jump into the episode so excuse me listeners i'm probably all over the place tonight that's just He's sheer excited. geek excitement because yes. i love the show dear go ahead what was your question i said weren't they <laughs> intending on killing them killing him very early on in season one and then once the actor took the role they, you mean Steve Harrington? Yeah. Joe Keery is mm-hmm. the actor who plays Steve And then Steve once Harrington. he took the role, they were like, oh my gosh, we love this guy. And then they ended up keeping him on. Yeah, that's possible. I haven't heard that, but yeah. I would believe that completely. I don't know if I dreamt it or it's an <laughs> no, actuality, no, I, I, but I'm almost positive that they actually plan on killing him. And he was supposed to be like a total douchebag and a very unlikable character, but the actor was so likable that they yeah. kept him on. That's oh, he, very believable. You know, they told me, um, they told me. The Duffer um, Brothers, the Duffer told, Brothers Tony. told me in <laughs> confidence. Wish. No, they said in the Beyond Stranger Things, um, 
interview, they actually said that his character was originally modeled off of James Spader in Pretty in Pink. Oh, that makes the total, total sense. douchebag. Yeah. But that then makes, the, he even looks like that. Right. But yeah. then Steve Harrington, the, the actor, Joe Keery, became so likable yeah. that they were like, oh, they realized we can't do that. He, yeah. We've got something special here. And Let's they were be right. honest. He's just real dreamy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but look, this is rare for me to say this, babe, but I, I think you're totally right in that case. Um, you know, I'm mm-hmm. sure that is true. Something else that I found <laughs> spectacular. Um, Tony's like gotten me all into podcasts now and now i listen to the other one he loves called the nerdist by chris hardwick oh yeah who had the duffer brothers on <laughs> last podcast, week yep. amazing <laughs> podcast and um these two brothers were literally like they had been trying to make it for eight years yeah. get in the door getting nowhere they failed for eight they years failed as for they eight said. years then they managed to get a door in on the show called wayward pines right which they wrote on right which they wrote on and then um yeah a lot of things happened and Netflix basically took a huge chance on Stranger Things. They were like, okay, we're going to take a chance on this. We really like it. Right. Uh, they actually told them, they were like, we're not going to promote this. That's or why put there was no promo it. marketing because they Correct. said, we're not going to do a marketing campaign. And, <laughs> and they said to them, they said this, they were like, uh, it'll probably take quite a long time, but we believe you'll get a following. So when within 48 hours, it, like you said, it blew up. Right. Everyone was just astounded. Yeah, it went way faster than anyone expected even netflix and look the the duffer brothers are phenomenal they created it they directed it uh we should give some credit to sean levy as well because he actually is an executive producer producer Mm -hmm. and he directed uh half of the episodes awesome um he's a director who's done uh like a bunch of comedy movies like cheaper by the dozen and the sequel like (laughs) yeah which my wife loves that movie with steve martin but he's done a bunch of comedies but he actually deserves a lot of credit as well did you want cool. to say something? No, I was just saying, did you ever touch on like how you found the the show? I remember we came home from work on a Friday. We were in a horrible argument and weren't talking. I was on my phone and you're going through Netflix and then you put on stra- the first episode of Stranger Things and then you're so into it and I kind of like 30 minutes in, I'm like, is this a movie? Like, what are you watching? Is this a movie I haven't seen before? And then that preceded an eight hour binge <laughs> of Stranger Things. <laughs> I didn't talk things. to you for two days. <laughs> you no, know, and then I know because then I got totally into it too. So we're both just sitting on the couch, like vegging out in front of Stranger Things. And that's what I remember because we were arguing and we weren't speaking. Oh, God. And then, and then we were talking. That never happens. And then we were talking after we're like the, the first couple, couple episodes because we were like, oh my God, that was so good. Okay, put on the next one, put on the next one. Like we both so good, got so into it. It was just wow. some random fluke. It was on Netflix. You somehow found it. I do remember and, that it came out of nowhere. Like yeah. uh, there was no And buzz. then a day later yeah. it was done, you yeah. know? Okay. Anyway, so look, we're, we're, you know, geeking out hardcore and Stranger Things. And by the way, it deserves it. it the show is it absolutely does. phenomenal. You know, it, it's as good as or better than all your box office phenomenons that come oh, yeah. out in, you know, summer. It really is. But uh, okay, good. So let's move on and, you know, we'll kind of discuss season two. And season two is really where we're going to get into some spoilers. Um, so what I wanted to say is... Um, Season two takes place a year later in yes. 1984. Yes. Okay. Now, there's, you know, I won't go into all the details of season one, but there's a few things you do need to know. So obviously, Will Byers is the kid that goes missing. He, you, find, you, you basically find out that he got snatched by this Demogorgon in this upside down universe. And the kids and Hopper and, and the mother, um, with the help of uh, Eleven, this young girl who has these, you know, supernatural psychic powers, supernatural yeah. powers, um, they defeat the Demogorgon and they do save Will Byers. Sorry, Bob. Poor Bob does not get saved. She does not. Uh, she does not. Um, and you think at the end of season one that um, Eleven has sacrificed herself for them for to the get kids. to kill yeah. the Demogorgon. Right. That's what you think. But then there is that little snippet with Hopper putting Egos which she loves uh, in the forest so you think oh she might be alive oh by the way I mean Egos I mean look at that it, it's a sensation again <laughs> that company has literally yeah. blown up from yeah that because, because of Stranger, Stranger Things, things. Yeah. I mean who knew I mean when we watched season two we had breakfast with Egos, Egos and strawberries, may as well cream. have funded Stranger well, Things I, I think Egos at first were kind of like huh and now I'm sure they're like ooh, they jumped on the bag yeah. wagon their sales have probably skyrocketed yeah. so this is what I'm talking about there were so many sensational things yeah. so many phenomenons within Stranger Things it just exploded totally also I will say I prepared a full Ego brunch. That's what I just While said. While we were binging. 
Yeah, with whipped cream, strawberries. It was delicious. And <laughs> Eggos. Yeah, no, I, I told them You that, can yeah. find the picture of that on Tony the Movie Guy. Yeah. Okay, so um, so when season one ends, it kind of ends on that cliffhanger yeah. of what happened to Eleven. You don't really know. And then another thing I should say is um, Will Byers, even though they saved him, there's a final scene of him in the bathroom. And he kind of has a... F- you don't know if it's a flashback or... But it kind of flashes to him being still in the upside down. And then he coughs up like this like slug that looks like it's from the upside down. Yeah. So you know even though he's saved, he's something's still wrong. disturbed. Something's yeah. wrong with him. And then another element I think I should cover is uh, there's a whole love triangle yes. in season one, which the girls will love, uh, between uh, Jonathan Byers, who's the... The, you know, God, there's so many characters here. I know it's kind of hard to keep track, but the uh, the big brother of Will Byers, the kid they save. He's kind of a geeky um, character. He's more of the... A loner. The loner. Yeah, yeah, he's the loner. So but him, a handsome Johnny Depp-looking loner. Yeah, yeah seriously, that. put me in the middle of this love triangle and I'm so happy. <laughs> Danny yeah. would be quite pleased. Yeah, well, when Danny found out he was British, she was like, ooh, hello, <laughs> I heard Jonathan. him speak and I was like, my mind just blew yeah. up. Was... Anyway, so those teenage characters, you've, as I said, you've got Steve Harrington, who at first is like the douche jock who becomes... A hero that you love super and then dreamy. you've got nancy wheeler and then you've got jonathan and they're dating and also then super dreamy yeah. well so nancy wheeler is dating steve harrington yes but there's kind of there's electricity between her and jonathan and you Correct. think they're going to get together but at the end they don't she's still with steve harrington Correct. Yeah. okay good so those are the key things you need to know yes. about season one <laughs> so then we fast forward to um 1984 um, oh, and Matthew Modine, who is like the sinister scientist, uh, Brenna, um, who ha- was the one who was keeping um, Eleven and doing all the tests on her. You don't really know what happens to him. You know, when right. the Demogorgon is attacking everyone, you see the Dem- Demogorgon jump on Brenna and then he just kind of vanishes. You don't yeah. know what happens. Okay, so season two, which just came out over the, the weekend. And uh, I watched the first episode. Friday morning. Yeah, I watched the first episode at 2.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then I binged the entire season the next uh, day. Um, and then I've now... So the first season I've watched five times. And I've now watched the second season three times in full. And He's it's been out for less a than nutter. a week. I am. Um, by the way, I... So, I mean, Stranger Things, the first season, Pitch Perfect... Stranger Things season two, I absolutely loved. Now, look, I will say this. It's not pitch perfect. There are some issues with it. I I did find some of the storyline a bit derivative, which I'll talk about. And I did find some of the characters weren't as fully fleshed out, especially the new ones, which we'll go into. I agree with that. Yeah, but still, I loved it. It It, was incredible. You know, it's just so binge worthy. I loved it. And again, the more I think about it, and I think this is the magic of Stranger Things, there are so many parts of it that are just magical. So many. You know, like little phenomenons within the show itself. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so season two, you basically have... Season two re- revolves around basically Will Byers and kind of the aftermath of him being stuck in the Upside Down. And he's having all these weird flashbacks and visions and you don't really know what's going on with him and it kind of builds and builds. Um, and then you've got Eleven who you find out... Um, you know, when she killed the Demogorgon, she was stuck in the Upside Down. And then she escapes and gets herself back to reality. But then when she tries to go back to Mike's house, all the federal agents are there. And, she, and Mike is the kid she has, like, a special relationship Mike Wheeler, with. Mike Wheeler, yeah. yeah. So he's kind of one of the kids, and he's the one that they kiss, and they, they yeah. form a real bond. Um, so then she kind of just runs off to the forest. Um, and then that's where you see Chief Hopper, Uh, leaving the egos to kind of reconnect with her and then he basically looks after her and that's one of the things i loved about season two is the pairing of david harbour and millie bobby brown who play chief jim harper and 11 he kind of becomes a father figure for her and he's hiding her right yeah he hides her in a cabin in the woods to protect her you know uh, they're also like two (laughs) for lack of a better word like you know kingpins going up against each other so headstrong both of them that they just fight really intense scenes between them um so that's a pairing that i thought was really fantastic yeah so okay so season two um 
there's several parts of this, you know, and I, again, I know I'm all over the place, but it's just because I love the show so much. So I'm just going to talk, you know? Um, but yeah, that pairing of, of Hopper and Eleven is fantastic. Um, but then, okay, good. So let's just kind of look at where season two starts. So season two actually has a, a opening that is completely separate from yeah. Hawkins. Actually, it opens in like Pennsylvania and you, you know you see a bunch of it looks like a bunch of guys in masks who have just come out of like a, a bank robbery you don't Something really like know yeah. um and then there's this uh like indian lady like this character who you can already tell there's something kind of sinister about her because she seems to know where they're going they're being chased by the cops or in a van she's telling um, them where where yeah, to turn where to turn and this and that you know and then she clicks her fingers and says boom yeah. and then this bridge explodes and the cops all stop and crash and she goes past um, and then you're like well, what the fuck you know and then this cop is freaking out and then I love that, that yeah and the cops are like the other cop his partner's like what's wrong with what you and then doing? yeah and it pans out to the bridge and there's nothing wrong with it it was yeah. all make-believe so and then it pans to this character who later you find out is called Callie um, and her nose is bleeding which is which, what happens with 11. Exactly. So whenever 11 uses her psychic abilities, yeah. she gets a nosebleed. Yeah. So you see the same thing happening with Callie and you're like, oh, oh snap. <laughs> and then the camera pans to her wrist That's and right. she has 008, number eight, which I found funny because, of course, 11 is number 11. Yeah. Of course, that's a whole cornucopia of story yeah who were all the other characters you just kind of assume that all the other ones were experiments that died but clearly not so um anyway and then it just flash flashes to hawkins and then brings you back to the the, the story kids. it's a year later and 11's with with jim hopper you know the kids are just being kids and you know having fun mike's all you know they called him emo mike or <laughs> they called the <laughs> actor i think that uh, his name was a uh, finn uh wolfhard they call him emo finn because he, <laughs> he was being so emo because he's all upset about 11 being he gone her right he misses her upset he can't reach her yeah so then um and then there's some new characters so sean austin plays this uh just lovable kind of goofball called bob who is uh, the new boyfriend of Joyce Byers, played by Winona Ryder. He's just this lovable I guy. Love he, yeah, he works at uh, Radio so Shack. Lovable. He is. Um, and then there's these... Um, I thought he was good. I, yeah. I liked him. I thought he was a welcome addition. Yeah, um, and he, he's got a great story. Then... Uh, where I think it did fall down is they had these two characters, uh, Max, who's this like tomboy girl, and then um, this Billy, who's this like bad boy. Her stepbrother, you know? who's nasty. Yeah, who's like really nasty. And I think that's where, I think those characters weren't fleshed out. And also what annoyed me was the, the kid, who, the teenager who played Billy was actually quite good. Yeah, he was Like good. he was quite scary. Yeah. He just didn't have enough yeah. scenery to chew on. I mean, I think on that, Tony, uh, uh, like... I think they were trying to obviously plug them in and maybe they'll develop them a lot more in right. season three. Sure. I think that's what I'm assuming because they kind of really introduced them and right. got them in the door. Yeah. I, I don't know because I did like them. I yeah, liked them the, as characters. The, the girl was okay. You yeah. know, she basically just becomes like this love interest for um, who was it? Dustin <laughs> and um, who's the other one? Um, Lucas, Lucas to like yeah. argue about basically. Yeah. Two of the boys uh, both like her because she's mad good at yeah. computer games and she skateboards. And, That's right. You yeah. know. Um, but anyway, I thought the, the, the kid who played the bad boy Billy was actually a good actor. Yeah, great. And he's got that delicious scene. It's so ridiculous where he With like the seduces the mum. <laughs> you know? I was laughing so hard at that. I thought it was absolutely amazing. It's actually good. And now Everyone's like, you know, we want a pairing in season right. three. We want Billy to sleep with the mum, you know. Yeah. Uh, she's the mum of Mike Wheeler, right? He's yeah, like, wow. Mike and Nancy. I yeah. didn't know Nancy had a sister. Yeah. <laughs> so like, creepy. He bites that biscuit like... Yeah. Totally. You know, and she, like, she's like in her, her robe having had a bath. And yeah. It's, it's actually it's almost as if it's like alluding to a porn. Yeah. The way she like comes to the door and it's this young guy yeah. and she's sort of it's really well she's just reading a romance novel exactly. in the tub the way they yeah. position it exactly it was such a random scene but it actually it kind of worked really funny. people love it um but anyway okay so let's talk about a few things about season two yeah um so number one as i said um 
you get a lot more of Eleven's backstory. So yeah. Eleven actually discovers, um, you know, that she, her mother is still alive. In season one, Hopper and, uh, you know, uh, Winona Ryder's character find the mother, but she's like in a comatose state. Yeah. And uh, Hopper actually lies to Eleven and says that the mother's gone. Yeah. But then she fi- discovers that the mother is still alive. So then she goes and actually finds the mother. And then that's how she finds out about number eight. Um, and so on. So it actually um, takes a long time for Eleven to reunite with the kids. Yeah. yeah I think it's the second to last episode. Yeah, it is. It's but when she does, episode. oh my God, oh, that's such so a good. badass scene. Uh, <laughs> so and I'm just going to say straight out that, I mean, one, two, three, four, five was excellent. Six was good. Seven, I didn't like so much. Eight and nine were spectacular yeah i agree so spectacular. yeah so i actually think i think the first six episodes um are solid yeah it's funny you said that about episode seven so a lot of critics and a lot of people have been divided on episode seven yeah so there are nine episodes to season two and they all pretty much follow a structure which is this whole story of will Byers, and then there's this shadow monster that he keeps having visions of that is slowly taking control of him and 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 you know eleven's whole backstory and that kind of follows a structure yeah but then episode seven is just kind of a standalone episode which is basically all about 11 and then number eight Kelly and it's completely separate to everyone else and for whatever reason that drove people crazy I really liked it I got bored I know it's funny yeah. so a lot of people didn't like that they thought it was just unnecessary and yeah I I thought a it was necessary for 11's storyline but b I, I actually kind of I just thought the episode was fun itself and again in in the beyond stranger things show it, it you know it was kind of inspired by like the warriors which is another kind mm. of urban street gang film from the from the 80s okay um which I actually love that movie it's like a cult film so okay. maybe that's why I enjoyed it more and I liked the beginning of it like it, I liked that she was exploring going to find her mother Right. And different things. And I and I and I liked the concept of them getting together. But I, I told you I was not a huge fan of the actress. Right. That was m- honestly my thing. Mean I, the, the girl who plays number eight. Correct. Allie, I, right. I, I, she had this very strong New Zealand accent that bothered me. I felt it didn't work with the story. She should have been someone from the Bronx or. I think right. she was like, going for London. Like the news clipping no, she said she was from London. Completely New Zealand. You, you know, one hundred percent. You know, Zealand. now that I think about it, I actually couldn't even place the accent. It's, it's yeah, yeah, it's very similar to Australian. But I happen to have a best friend who's from New Zealand. Oh. So I was like, what the heck with this New Zealand yeah. girl in the, in Stranger Things? Right. So that's what threw me off. It in the Beyond me. Stranger Things, she doesn't sound like that though. I think she was she going for London. Oh, she does. Yeah. She doesn't. I think she was going for England because. Oh. The news clipping said girl she did missing a horrible from London. Job. Yeah, well, but the accent that's was even really worse. weird. Yeah, she did a horrific job personally, trying to be English. Personally, I think that the storyline was necessary for Eleven's sure. Yeah, so did I. Progress, yeah. but it could have been done a lot yeah. better. I, I don't think, think I it needed like that. a yeah. whole standalone episode that it, you, you kind of feel taken out of the story, and then you get kind of get. And that's what most people complained about. So I'll say for the record, I think A, it was necessary for the journey and B, it didn't bother me at all. Um, But even if that does bug people, that's one road bump to an incredible season. Oh, totally. It didn't ruin anything for me in the season. Like I loved the season. And just like you said, Episode eight and nine oh. are knockout. Eight, especially as you said, it's based off Jurassic. It's Park. inspired by inspired Jurassic Park. Inspired by, yeah. and you'll know exactly why if you're a Jurassic Park fan like me, who has seen it about twenty six times. You'll see it and go, wow, this is brilliant. Yeah. So I mean, the finale is just phenomenal. Oh. Um, are we going to talk about the big spoiler in episode think eight? We should. You don't think we should? Maybe that's the one thing we should leave out. Okay, you, you know what? We're going to make a pact going and we're going to leave it spoiler heavy... Oh, let's just do it, Tony. Let's just really? do it. I mean, okay. at the beginning of this episode, I'm telling people, like, if okay, you sure. haven't Fine. seen the whole thing, don't listen okay, to well, this. Okay, well, this broke my heart. And, and this is why I thought this character was so well done. So Sean Austin plays this character called Bob, who's a new character, and he dies heroically in episode Very eight. Very heroically. Very heroically. He saves the day, and they call him Bob Newbie's superhero. Remember, Aww, that's what they call them. yeah. And it broke my heart. It was so effectively done. Yeah. It was so effectively done. And that's why I was like, wow, you know, I didn't really, 
I didn't really care about the other two characters, the other yeah. two new characters. Him or you also, cared about. Yeah, or also the scientist new character, Paul Reiser, who's from Aliens. Um, he plays the kind of scientist who took over from yeah. Matthew like, Modine's oh, more... He's a good guy. Kind he's of. Sort of. Yeah, kind of. He's still of. like a government, you know... He's uh, trying to keep yeah. the peace, whereas Brenner, played by Matthew was Modine, evil. was very sinister yeah. and evil. Mm -hmm. This guy, but so, but he was okay. Yeah. You know, Sean Austin was a character you, I don't know, you kind of fell in love with. He was you get to know lovable. him on a more intimate level than the others. And also you saw Joyce be happy, you yeah. know? And, and he's totally. such a nerd. Yeah. He's such a sweet, lovable nerd, works in a, you know, AV shop. What was the he's... movie? He's like, Mr. Mom. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mom. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's so lovable. It broke my heart too. I, yeah. I unfortunately saw it coming. Yeah, I sobbed too. Uh, but And it was done so effectively, especially so well. because oh, you're you like, think hey, he's in the you're clear. like, oh, he's going to die. No, he doesn't. Oh, he's going to die. And then you think he's in the yeah. clear. And then it stops and he looks and he smiles at Joyce. Yeah, you and knew, then, you bam, knew the Demogorgon just though. pounces on yeah. him. And then his death is really gruesome. Really gruesome. <laughs> really gruesome. It's like the most gruesome scene in the yeah. whole show anyway so sorry i had to let it out I, it's that, true that's probably we why i've <laughs> been that's probably why i've been all over the place because i was like holding i just want to talk about bob you know i bob love bob was, so much it was it was really sad a beautiful ending he heroically you know gave his life to save all the others in a way because he saved the day he yeah. did what the others couldn't do and it was sad, but... Yeah, so um, again, as I said, uh, when the Duffer brothers were going through all the audition tapes from just tons of people for that character, which was supposed to be a much smaller role, they came across an audition tape from Sean Austin, and they were like, what? holy shit, yeah. Samwise! You know, and they're like, well, now we have to have him in it, and we have to, like, make, make the bigger. character bigger. Right. So sense. he wasn't even supposed to last that long. But uh, anyway, he was fantastic in it. Um, that, and they didn't necessarily want such a recognizable person for that role oh really makes oh sense. i didn't yeah know that, they didn't yeah, they didn't sense. think that like people would be able to separate him from samwise and from goonies so but see to me they that saw was, the again, tape though and then they were a, like oh, such perfect. a perfect throwback yeah, to the 80s one, exactly yeah. yeah i mean i just think that was genius i personally i want to see like you know Molly Ringwald yeah. and, you know, Matthew Broderick and <laughs> totally. all those people. Are, you know, I, like, to me, that's not cheesy. To no, me, all, I want to see that all day long. Yeah. Um, but anyway, okay, so in, in season two, I think there's a, you know, a couple things I'll highlight, and, you know, and you can tell me there's anything else you want to say. Um, but uh, so n number one, the most valuable players to me in season two was Dustin. Uh, I absolutely, he was my favorite. I loved Dustin from season one. He was kind of the comic relief and adorable. But in season two, his character really gets a lot more. So yeah. number one, you've got Check this. Check out these pearls. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he, he does, his, I can't his do it. off and he has his teeth. Yeah. It's so amazing. Well, first of all, he has this whole relationship that he get, develops with the polywog. That's you right. know, Which, it doesn't really answer the question, but you think it's the thing that um, Will Byers coughed up at the yeah. end of season one. Yeah. Um, Which would make sense. It would connect. I don't so think he so. He keeps it. Well, again, so Related. you're not sh you're not sure. You don't really know. I think well, it's it a is. year later. Yeah, and I, it grew so rapidly. Yeah, I think it was, but you don't know. Yeah. You just know that it's you know. Well, you find out what it is, but you know that it's something weird. So he finds this like little like slug baby monster thing, and then he calls it Dart from you know D'Artagnan. Yeah, the Three Musketeers from the chocolate bar. And then <laughs> keeps it as a you know keeps it as his pet, and then it grows into a little freaking demogorgon that eats you know his cat. yeah that eats his cat you know oh well, they say justice for muse yeah. the cat's called muse um you know he and, lies to yeah. the mother even the relationship with his mother yeah it was really funny. good it's so yeah. funny yeah so anyway so he has this whole beautiful relationship with the, the demogorgon which comes into play at the end when yeah. you know the demogorgon lets him and his friends go because he has right. that bond with him but Demodog. Demo, oh yeah, he nicknames. Demodogs. No, he does. He does. Yeah. No one else does. Yeah, he he nick, nicknames them demodogs. Demogorgon dog. Demodog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but the biggest surprise to me was Steve Harrington and Dustin pairing up. Bromance. Yeah, I mean, to Such me, a good it was just the best thing ever. I think that starts in like season uh, episode five or episode five, six. six yeah yeah and the duffers talk about this they were like well dustin kind of gets his heart broken yeah. because lucas goes off with max and he's kind of on his own you know with the, the demo dog that he's trying to find and then steve again this is a spoiler breaks up with uh nancy wheeler well, he hasn't officially broken up with her well she's already banging jonathan no, uh, <laughs> yeah but i mean she they have a fight 
and then she goes off with Jonathan. Actually, I and should you let you girls geek over. out about that scene because that was kind of a really cute yeah, scene. Yeah, because they have basically, she does the old, like she's really upset about things and isn't happy about this whole Bob, uh, the fact that they have to lie to her parents about Bob being dead, gets all upset, gets drunk at a party and then, you know, in her drunkenness declares really that she doesn't really love steve yeah so she breaks up with steve that's not what i but meant she doesn't though. officially break up with him I no meant... but it's we're thinking about it as adults you have to think about it as yeah. people in high school it's exactly. like exactly i hate you we're out i hate you and, and they don't even have to say you. you're over but i meant like when it's her and jonathan finally get yeah. together because there's all that sexual tension it. in season one i hate oh you it. didn't I like it because i want him for it. myself <laughs> oh so did you actually hate it or not no it was very adorable the way it was so cute so talk about that for a second then i'll talk about the bromance nancy and Jonathan are off basically um they they go to find this um basically like a what do you call him and one of those he was reporter. a he was an a investigative reporter. Reporter. conspiracy theories that's what I wanted for to the say. Chicago Sun Times and he gets hired by Barb's parents to investigate her death because they think that or her disappearance rather yeah her death yeah. The, well actually her disappearance is and her death is being kept under wraps yeah, yeah. so yeah. they go off to investigate that show up at his doorstep while you know Steve is back home with Dustin doing his thing um helping him and they end up spending the night and um that conspiracy theorist guy he like kinda, plants a seed in their yeah, head yeah he, he makes it very obvious that he can see they are totally into each other and they're like no we're not no we're not it's the he's classic. like yeah so do you guys want to take the room and they're like we're not together no, we're not no, together we're not together. together and then obviously they I'm do, just sitting back and letting you they guys do the old she's this. in the bedroom <laughs> he's on the couch she looking walks, at the door she walks up oh, he walks up they turn around and then they come back and like bodies slam together and it's all passionate <laughs> bodies slam together is the best way to describe that it was very well described um, it was actually a really cute it scene it was adorable it was a really cute scene and, and, and PG-13 so it was course. very cute and yeah. then the morning after scene is so funny oh my god say that Danny I'm gonna let you say that that, that was, was hilarious funny. during breakfast I forget breakfast. the exact line the guy, the oh, news reporter the guy, out. is sitting oh, there. Yeah. And he's the like, oh, yeah. yeah, and he's like, how was Jonathan, the pullout? How was the pullout? And she's like, <laughs> she they both like choke on their face. Meaning the pullout. Couch. And he's like, yeah. the pullout, the pullout sofa? <laughs> sofa. Was it comfortable? <laughs> it was so funny. And then no, he's like, oh yeah, thing. it was fine. And then he's like, uh, yeah. And he has this like creepy, like <laughs> I, I know what you guys did smile on. You guys, and she's all smiling. So. They, they were meant to be together. So yeah. I was very happy for that to occur. Although you then really start to feel bad for Steve because he's so lovely now. I we liked, like him. I liked him at the beginning too. Like he was a douchebag really. at the very beginning. Oh, he was quite douchey. Yeah. At the very beginning. But then he comes no, back of, in. and He was he, douchey basically until towards the end after the of, whole fight yeah. when he gets pummeled. Yeah. And then he buys Jonathan yeah. a new camera because yeah. he, him then and his he, douchebag. That's the last it. episode. Then he was great. Yeah. Then you loved him. And, and, yeah. So you love him. I don't want him to liked him. Yeah. No, you did. Oh, no. I, I love Steve from the beginning. And yeah. Absolutely. Even though you're right. I mean, again, I'm not into all the woo romance, but you're right. Uh, Nancy and Jonathan, were they d- they belong together. Yeah. So you were very happy that they were together, but you did feel sad for Steve. Correct. Um, so Although he ag- is now a best little buddy. Well, so that's what I was going <laughs> to say. So the Duffers were kind of like, so what are we going to do? We really want to give Steve Harrington, this character, more and, and Dustin more. Um, but now they're both kind of loners. Let's put them together. It's and perfect. it was such an odd and surprising coupling. And it works so well. You know, it, it was just fantastic. And then they have this whole, you know, talk on like the train tracks when they're walking. And yeah. it, it's right out of Stand By Me. Totally. And he's giving mm-hmm. him advice. He's giving about Dustin girls. advice about girls. And then he asks him how Steve does his hair because Steve has crazy hair and he's like Farrah Fawcett spray you know and he tells <laughs> so him that, that, you know and it was just I don't know there's these little moments were yeah. so beautiful and then even later on just how protective he becomes of yeah. mm-hmm. of Dustin and then oh my god at the end at the snowball uh, he see. drives Dustin to the snowball and they're like bros and you know Dustin is like a little mini uh, Steve his Harrington hair, like his Steve hair Harrington. looks like him you know so yeah actually this is a funny thing my favorite part of the entire season two was that 17 minute Mm -hmm. sequence in the snowball at the end the last episode all the action all the explosions all the mystery and suspense there's just this beautiful whole sequence so again in the end in season one mike wheeler asks 11 if she'll go to dance with him at the snowball like a, it's you like know. a middle school dance. Right. Oh, I miss. I forgot. Yeah, that, that's actually. in season one. I forgot that. So that's yeah. the reference. But then she sacrifices herself. You think that's so? Right. It doesn't happen. So then 
there's this beautiful throwback at the very last episode. And again, so we're going full on spoilers here, but it, to me, it was just the best it's scene. Beautiful. Eleven's and the comeback. Music they used the two yeah. songs. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was Police, Every Breath You Take, yeah. and Sidney Lauper, yeah. Time and Time Again, or yeah. something. Yeah. When you're lost. Um, yeah, but anyway, so I mean, Eleven's back now. So then she goes to the snowball with Mike, and that's yeah. beautiful. And Lucas is now hooked up with Max, and Will seems better, and he's with a girl. But then Dustin comes yeah, in with his Steve Harrington hairstyle, and he's all confident, and he goes up to this girl that he has a crash Popular on. Popular girl. Yeah, and she's like, ew, <laughs> you know? And then he's like, bummed. goes up to another one. And he's one. like, and he puts his head high, and he goes up to another girl, and he keeps getting blown down. Because Steve said, like, you know, go yeah. and just Pretend go with confidence. Yeah. Pretend and you don't care be confident you know and then there's this shot which actually to me was the most heartbreaking shot of the entire show of like dustin just sitting on his In own the on the bleachers like crying you know because no one will dance with them and then nancy wheeler and, and that made me really like oh. her character actually totally. um sees him on his own and then she takes him and dances with him and he's all happy it was, and everyone's looking uh, and the popular girl's like whoa she's yeah. dancing with him and he yeah. she just grants him like she she gives him so much love in like in a and she tells him uh, you're my favorite of yeah, my, out my of all of my brother's friends, friends you're my favorite it's such a perfect homage to all those yeah. john hughes films of the totally. 80s i mean you know ferris bueller's day off breakfast club yeah. pretty in pink 16 candles it really reminded me of that and again i'm sure that's what they were looking at but again it had its own beating heart i, yeah. I loved it. it was my favorite sequence absolutely you want to say something Oh, you kind of went past it, though. What did you want to say? Well, I was going to say, remember in season one where he's like goes and the like, first episode of season one goes and offers her a piece of pizza. And she's like, remember, she used to hang out with us. Like he always had a great, like caring, like he missed uh, to oh, her, Dustin, Dustin to yeah, Nancy. That's true. Actually. And so it kind of comes for, full circle when she comes and helps him out. Like, oh, I'll yeah. come yeah. dance totally with true. you. The very first episode, mm -hmm. Dustin right. like wants to give her pizza and he's got that big dorky smile. Nancy, and she Nancy. like slams the door in his face because she's a teenager now. Yeah, she brushes yeah. him you know? off. You're right. I didn't even <laughs> think true. about that. That's so really it comes true. full circle to I her. I think that that's the perfect thing about that 17 minute sequence or whatever it was that it was. I mean, it's so gratifying because so it closes gratifying. everything. Like Lucas gets the girl, fine, whatever. Dustin, yeah. you know, like feels better about himself and dances with Nancy, which kind of brings it back to season one. And Will is not, you know, a girl comes up to him and say, you know, zombie boy or whatever, which Dance is like as a derogatory term towards him because of what he went through last year. But he seems but happy. Then, but then asks him to dance. So it's like he's getting kind of included yeah, back exactly. into that whole yeah. social normalcy. structure. And then you've got exactly. Hopper and Joyce outside sharing a cigarette together. And they have a whole past from their high school Well, it would be career. too soon for them to connect up because Bob had just died. But yeah. I'm sure season it three, they'll connect up. No, it, it would Do be it in bad form. Like I was thinking about that. I was like, if they had like kissed at that moment, that would be if they really kissed, weird. Oh, yeah. And then of course, in true Stranger Things style, mm -hmm. everything seems great. Wonderful. And then it just flips upside down and it shows the that the school, whole upside yeah. down is still there yeah. and that shadow monster is still lurking underneath. Well, yeah. I don't think the um, upside down is going anywhere. No, how right. can you just close it? the gate? Yeah, they didn't the gate. closes mm -hmm. the gate, yeah. So I, I loved, oh my God, I loved the end. Funnily enough, those, uh, episode eight... I could rave on about longer than even that. Oh, it was I, fantastic. I loved yeah. it so much and my heart was beating so fast the, the way they did that. Yeah, it was non Entire non-stop. sequence. Mm -hmm. So those two were my favorite in the whole, whole, whole season. Well, they put a nice little bow on it. They leave you oh, like, you're, you feel beautiful. so satisfied and then it flips upside down and then you're like, oh no. Now then, another year. And now you're anticipating season three like yeah, right off the Yeah, which they'll definitely do. The Duffers, oh, yeah. Duffers had said they're, they're, they're looking at a four or five season arc, which I think is perfect i you know be about right. i don't want because i think it's a mistake when sorry any but like walking dead when it just goes don't on and on and on with your diss of the but walking I, dead. I, I think that's a problem sometimes when you know oh, agree, they just though. go like they're 10, like it's so successful seasons. let's drag yeah. it out and create these new storylines it's like especially with a show like this it's like a well, movie you know, yeah because there's only so the much they can do end. we can't have will you know almost die again he's almost yeah. died in two seasons but i think they could do a four or five year arc yeah that's about right here's what i love to see puberty yeah <laughs> these exactly. characters become teenagers because Which they're growing be you know? the kid who plays lucas 
just turned 16 by the way wow yeah. I know, it's like nuts. he's the eldest of all of and them, i saw I a picture of 11 um but billy what's her Millie name? bobby brown, Millie Bob brown. <laughs> and she's 13 but this picture she looks like she's 17 really? she looks like she's a little adult. These, they all look no, like she's little in adults a little now. black leather dress her hair is straightened and it's like down to her shoulders what is she she's posh four, spice no i'm serious <laughs> I, yeah. know, I know what you're talking about. I and saw the picture. I saw it and I was like, no. And I look closer and I'm like, I think she <gasps> likes that she can have hair because in all of season one, she's got a buzz cut. Exactly. You know? So, okay, good. So that's kind of the recap. I mean, look, season one, again, as I said, it was a phenomenon. It just became an instant pop culture sensation. Yeah. And to me, I, I truly mean this. Season one is pitch perfect. Completely perfect. I think everything about it is right. Everything. The music, the plot, the characters, the acting. Everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. Season two, I think, is almost perfect. Yes. I absolutely loved it. Yes, I, I did find... Seven. I did... Okay, see, episode seven didn't bother me. I know that bothered a lot of people. I did find, as I said, the, uh, the two characters, Max and Billy particularly... Just, I didn't think they were great. And then, I remember I said earlier that I did think there were a few things that were derivative. So, for instance, one thing that did bug me, but it's fine. I get why the they drawings. did it. Right. So, yeah. in season one, it's the, the mother, bulbs. Joyce Byers, uses light bulbs to communicate. And then in season two, uh, they use crayons drawing and making this map. Yeah. It was just a bit a too... Bit, yeah. But again, that's kind of like Force derivative. Awakens with, you know, or Empire Strikes Back with another Death Star, you know. Yeah, but totally. why not? Let's just keep blowing them up, you know. But, um... What it wins in is, again, the story was fantastic. The throwback, the nostalgia. You know, you've got Ghostbusters, Jurassic Park, Terminator. Yeah. All these and different references. And to me, the, the, the kids got even stronger. Even better. Mm -hmm. So as even I said. Even better at acting. And right. some of the scenes, like these kids, these are not like, these are kid actors where you're like, wow, these kids can act. Thanks for reminding me. Because Noah Schnapp, the kid who plays Will Byers, oh. in season one, he's captured so he's not in most of season most one. Of it, yeah. In season two, he's phenomenal. he acts his pants off. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of unfair to put one spotlight because they're all great. But they're he all amazing, is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really just see how great of an actor that kid is. I he mean, he incredible. just looks so terrified and he does it so well. Mm -hmm. um, the fits he has. Yeah. The the because he uh, and, and he gets kind of possessed by the possessed shadow monster. Because he's possessed by the evilness, so he has to be the shadow monster and himself, and it's taking him over, and he his his. His fight with, as it's taking him over, yeah. his grief, it was, oh, so yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. So, I mean, everything about it was, it just keeps building, and it yeah. was so good, the music, everything. And then, as I said, to me, what I think really was a winning formula was the, the Dustin and Dart with his yeah, potty And then the Dustin and Steve Harrington Loved romance. It. I mean, who knew? It just made that show so phenomenal. Yeah. Sean Austin as Bob, I thought was just such a great Wonderful. character. Yeah. So heartbreaking. Um, you know, and then uh, I, I, I loved uh, also Eleven and Jim yeah, Hopper. Me too. They have a beautiful, um, you know, communication at the end when they basically kind of make up. And yeah. I don't know if you noticed this. A lot of people missed this. Um, the sign scientist paul reiser at the end gives him a birth certificate i did see do you that. know what it mm -hmm. says it says jane hopper that's right so, so he is legally uh, the guardian and they changed the name to jane hopper yeah mm -hmm. i saw you know, that so which is beautiful because in season one you it's giving his, her a life well again. in season one his daughter died of cancer yeah you know and he was like totally distraught by mm -hmm. that and you get that whole backstory in season one so in season two it's kind of he has this relationship where they're kind of butting heads but at the end you know yeah. he's like a father figure yeah. so well they're butting heads because she's a kid yeah well, she's a kid and yeah. she realizes a that like strong kid. that she's yeah. robbed <laughs> essentially of her childhood she can't leave her house because she you know because of her abilities or whatever and he's and this fighting is, this gives her her childhood yeah back, there's that her whole scene where she has that like yeah. psychic tantrum yeah. when you know they argue and <laughs> the she's windows like, explode yeah telepathically throwing books and stuff at him and yeah. tables and if like, i could do like that a... when i was a teenager and when i was going through puberty i would have won every argument with my parents and if you could and do it, that now i'd be screwed you would be very screwed grief like he's almost letting out his protectiveness of having lost his own child mm -hmm. i feel on her a little oh, absolutely. bit oh and going like over and beyond over too. and beyond yeah, yeah. and he He's says, like, admits it hovering. at the end yeah. he admits what he did wrong yeah. and goes you know this is the I'm here to keep you safe yeah yeah and, yeah. and then they uh, their relationship to me was definitely yeah my two top favorite what was things. it I teach and I protect or something like yeah. that see the fact that we could literally just sit here and we could probably just keep talking about this for hours which obviously we can't do but that's a testament I think to 
what made Stranger Things such a cultural phenomenon yeah. mm-hmm. it, and why it created such age. word of mouth. Because, again, mm-hmm. it's not just a science fiction show oh, or, no. a, or a horror or a comedy. Or, or it's coming not, of age. Yeah, or it's not just something that's got, like, these cute kids in it. It's mm-hmm. like there are so many parts and components to it yeah. that really I think everyone can somehow relate to. Totally. Exactly. You know, and for me... It's like almost everything that I can relate to. All those films from the 80s that are like among my favorite films of all time that it pays respect to. But then, as I said, the music, the characters, the acting, the story, it's like a gift. So thank you, Stranger Things. We (laughs) We love love you you so so much. much. Thank you, Duffer Brothers. We really do. And and Sean Levy, because uh, he directed so many executive produced them. You know, well, look, the Duffer Brothers created it. So, of course, they deserve the real respect. But, um, you know, I just find it funny that everyone kind of talks about them. And I saw that he actually directed half the episodes and (laughs) produced it. But, Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing is a win yeah. and uh, now we have to wait a year for season three so thanks so how for many that t- how many times are we rewatching season two by then <sighs> well as I said gone, like, three I've, times? yeah I've watched it three times so I've watched less it than one and a week. half <laughs> I'll probably give it a few weeks and I'll probably watch it again. Okay. I'll, I'll watch it five times easily yeah. before season three comes out. Season three I'm going to assume will drop around the same time next yeah. year. Probably. Mm. That's what I think. They said year, year and a half on yeah. that podcast. All yeah. right. We probably yeah. should wrap up the episode. But um, <laughs> anyway. We are passionate. <laughs> we love Stranger Things. And we do. We Look, if you haven't seen Stranger Things, um, well, number one, I hope you didn't <laughs> listen ruined. to this whole episode because you're <laughs> fucked. But, um, you know, uh, if you haven't seen episode, uh, if you haven't seen Stranger Things, then hopefully you turned this off, watched it, and now you're finally listening exactly. to me now. Um, but if you have, then actually I, I guarantee you're already a, a huge fanboy like we are. Um, but it, it's a such boy. a it's such a phenomenal show. Yeah, fangirl, fanboy, <laughs> fan, um, just fan. I works. can't recommend Stranger Things more. Uh, it, it's just pure pop entertainment. Um, mm-hmm. And also, here's here's a last parting word I will say. It should be watched over and over again. One hundred. I know I'm crazy, no, but it not, actually should not. be watched. You catch over things and over every again. time. Though. You do. You get more out totally. of it. So I would recommend watching it several times: season one and season two. One hundred percent. Okay. Just watch them on repeat until season three comes out, like Tony will end up doing. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm probably gonna just start watching it again now. But look, thanks so. Let's do it. Thanks so much for listening. Look, I know this episode was kind of all over the place. What you got was just pure unfiltered excitement yes. but I hope you all still enjoyed it <laughs> um, let us know your thoughts and uh, good night good night night Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. Want to remind you all to follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Tony the Movie Guy, and email us in at Tony the Movie Guy podcast at gmail.com. Also, please, please, please leave five-star reviews on iTunes. Those are really, really helpful uh, for us to get the podcast out there. And also, you can share it with your friends, post on your own social media. That'll help us get the word out as well. We really want... Uh, a large audience for this and hope it's a success so we can keep on doing it. See you next time.